This is Anthony Priscilla doing some college algebra today with my college algebra class. And today we're going to be working with the zeros of polynomials. Before we get into actually working any problems, let me go ahead and state a couple of, well, a definition and a couple of theorems that are going to pop up during uh, this discussion of uh, zeros of polynomials. The first of which is just the definition. What the heck is a zero of a polynomial? Well, the number C is a zero of the polynomial P of X means P of C equals zero. So when we say some number C or whatever we want to use R or K is a zero of a polynomial, what we're saying is if you plug it into the polynomial, you'll get zero. For instance, for example, ooh, that's not a good blue pen, is it? Um, we'll just do something really... For example, the number seven is a zero of the polynomial p of x equals x minus 7. Very easy polynomial, a linear one. If you plug z 7 in for x, you're going to get 0. I think everyone can see that, uh, can uh, agree with that. Now, something called the remainder theorem is going to be popping up. I just want to go ahead and state that definition and two theorems that we're going to be seeing. The remainder theorem says this. If a polynomial P of X, whenever I use P of X, that's standing for a polynomial. Okay? So polynomial P of X is divided by, oops, divided, I can't spell today, by x minus k, its remainder is p of k. Oh, wow. So if we divide a polynomial by something in the form, really it's x plus or minus a number, okay? If this had been a plus, then k is a negative number. So if we divide a polynomial by x minus k, its remainder will be the same thing as just plugging that number k in. See how my green is showing. The factor theorem, again, I want to go ahead and get all of this stated. The factor theorem says that uh, P of C equals zero if and only if x minus c is a factor of p of x, the polynomial. And that if and only if it works both ways. If p of c is zero, then x minus c is a factor. Also, if x minus c is a factor, then p of c is zero. So we know if we plug C in, we'll get 0. We also know that X minus C, let's say, would have a remainder. When you divide by X minus C, you're getting P of C. So if this is C, is a 0. Then X minus C is a factor. Now before we do anything with that, I want to discuss the division algorithm. And I just wanted to get those things stated out of the way. So here's the division algorithm. And this is something that you learned a long time in grade school. When you first learned to divide uh, whole numbers, that you probably didn't give it such a fancy name, but you sure did discuss... Uh, but you should have discussed multiplying and how you would check 
excuse me, a division, and how you would check a division problem using multiplication. For instance, everyone knows 9 divided by 2 is a 4 with the remainder of 1. So how would you check that? Well, you would say to check it, you'd say 2 times 4 plus 1 equals 9. So what that's saying is that dividend, the dividend is the step that's under the division symbol. The dividend equals the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So dividend equals divisor times quotient plus remainder. And not yet ready to actually uh, do a problem now. This is a homework problem that we're going to be doing. It says, let me see. Hmm. I wonder. Do I need to zoom in just a little, see if we can make it a little bigger? No, I don't think it is. Okay, so, let's see. It says express f of x. They're calling the polynomial f of x. Well, I've been using p of x. Okay. Express this polynomial f of x equal to 4x to the 4th minus 2x cubed minus 14x squared minus 4. Express it in the form x minus k times q of x plus r. The x minus k, that's the uh, divisor. X minus k. So we can go ahead and fill that part in right there. There's a 4. Then the, this set here is the quotient q of x. So that divisor is x minus k. The quotient they're calling q of x. And the remainder plus r. And the way we're going to do that is with the synthetic division. You write your k, and you write the coefficient straight across. Now, this is going to be a little tricky because, remember, you've got to have, uh, if you start with the x to the fourth, every exponent has to be represented ending with a constant term. x to the fourth, x cubed x squared x there's no constant term here so we're going to have to put a zero there make sure you put the zero to hold the place you're looking at the let's see where's a real light pen this is the x to the fourth x to the third x squared x constant now with Synthetic division, carry down that 4, and whatever you put down here, you multiply it there. Have y'all got the pattern for this? 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 2 plus 16 is 14. 14 times 4 is 56. Negative 14 plus 56. That would be what? Uh, 42? 42. <clears throat> 42 times 4. I see some of you with your calculator. 42 times 4, is that 168? And then negative 1 plus 168 is 167. Ooh, what's 167 times 4? Let's see, 28. Is that a 668? One. 167 times 4, yes, 668, yeah, that's right. And then 0 plus 668 is 668. Now the answer is staring us in your face. Do you all remember how we get the quotient from looking at this last line? This last number here is the remainder. And this is the quotient, you just decrease the exponent by 1. So in this blank right there, 
you would write 4 x to the what exponent third plus 14 x squared plus 42 x plus 167 so that goes in there and then the remainder goes right there now to go ahead and illustrate the uh, remainder theorem if you have a calculator one thing you can do is just take this number 4 in and plug it in for x and it should give you that remainder 668 that's what the remainder theorem says if a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus k its remainder is p of k so what I'm going to do right now it's going to seem strange I'm going to plug a 4 in right here for x plug in a 4 in, we would have 4 times 4 raised to the 4th minus 2 times 4 raised to the 3rd minus 14 times 4 squared minus 4. When I hit equals, notice, I don't know if y'all can see that, we're getting 668. That's exactly what the remainder was. So I feel very confident in this answer. Uh, probability that I messed up out here and still got 668, which I know is the right remainder, uh, is very small. So that seems like I have the right answer for that. It's a nice little way of checking it. And let's do another one like this. On um, this one, it doesn't actually give you the bl uh, blanks to fill in. All it says is, express it in that form, x minus k times q of x plus r. To get started, the x minus k we can already do. x minus, if k is a negative 1, then we have x minus a negative 1 or x plus 1. So that's the x minus k part. Now we need that quotient part. Okay, to do the quotient part, we got to use the um, synthetic division. So let's see, k is negative 1. Writing, let's see, 4, 3, 2, ooh, there's an x missing. So x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared. No x, constant, 3 times, carry down the 3, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, 4 minus 1 is, excuse me, 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, negative 11 plus a negative 1, negative 12, negative 12 times negative 1 is 12, 0 plus 12 is 12, 12 times negative 1 is negative 12, remainder 6. So this started off with the x to the, oops, there went my motion detector cutting off. Started off with the x to the 4th. So this remain, or so this quotient will be 3x to the 3rd plus 1x squared minus 12x plus 12 plus the remainder of 6. So the second set of parentheses, that's the quotient, plus the remainder. Now you can punch this into my math lab, see if it's right, or you could do, use that remainder theorem again. Let's plug negative 1 in here and see, are we getting 6? Let's plug a negative 1 in and see if we're getting 6. Now be careful when you do that. 3 parentheses negative 1 raised to the 4th plus 4 parentheses negative 1 raised to the 3rd minus 11 parentheses negative 1 squared plus 18. Ooh, you don't see it's sort of a glare, isn't it? C 
6. So yes, I got the right remainder, so I'm very confident this is right. Uh, maybe that's it for right now. We'll pick up and do some more later.